shouldn't assortative mating nudge this stability? Isn't that kind of a little bit of a dice roll? What, what role does marriage play in this? Well, it, it turns out in, in the data that I'm looking at, that's the, that's the key element of the story is that we can measure assortative mating. It turns out Britain has fantastically good marriage records because the, the marriage record in uh, England and Wales, at least, uh, from 1837 onwards, it actually asks, uh, what is the father of each party and what's the father's occupation? And what's the husband and wife's occupation? <laughs> and then also, earlier on, it also effectively measures literacy. And so it actually, you know, there's a lot of information on these marriage records. And the government is sitting on something like 110 million of these. And, uh, but it costs, I think, 11 pounds to, to order one of them. But there's a bunch of kind of freelance amateur anarchist genealogists who've set about going to the record offices and recording this data and, and setting it up on a website. And so we were able to get about 1.5 million of these records from this site. And what's evident in that data is that people are matching very, very closely in marriage. Uh, and that that's consistent and not changing in England all the way from 1837 till now. And that when people somehow in marriage, what mattered to people was the underlying social status of the person they were marrying. And that is something that has very big social consequences because A, it's going to mean that the inheritance of status is much stronger. And if what was happening is that men just married a random woman, right? So suppose men, the only thing they cared about was the physical attractiveness of their spouse. And they married in that way. Then the parents would not be very strongly correlated in status. And consequently, the children will not be very strongly correlated with any individual parent. Because just to interject there, a woman's mm -hmm. attractiveness has a negligible or not at all relationship between her social status. Right. And, yep. and, and, and so, so we could imagine that kind of model of marriage. And what that'll do then is also, over time, it would result in less distribution of abilities in society, right? Because if what's happening is very high-status people marry only very high social abilities people, then you get over time a widening of the distribution of abilities in society. And so who decides to marry whom <laughs> actually has these huge social consequences in terms of how strongly status is passed on, but also in terms of what's the overall distribution of abilities within society. And so uh, with a, the marriage pattern that you're observing in Britain, then uh, this is what is actually driving this very slow social mobility. And you could actually predict with genetic transmission that if you just force people to marry at random, <laughs> you would actually almost double the rates of social mobility in British society. Uh, that's the redistribution strategy that we should be pushing toward. None of this education stuff. Right. Just get people to get people to mix the social status that they're marrying within more. That's right. If you just gave them a random, here's someone's ID number or something. I guess we don't have an ID in Britain, but here's here's your number. Yeah. Uh, and 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 this is actually very interesting. And so. So we've actually d done some work uh, on another aspect of marriage, which it, it was widely believed that the way marriage works is that somehow women tend to marry up. The women trade off uh, physical attractiveness for status in males. And studies definitely show that when people report their kind of ideal marriage partner, that women report more about income or education, stuff like that, and men report more about physical appearance, right? And so, so we were expecting potentially in this data to find that when we have this huge collection of marriages, that women on average would be somehow moving upwards in this, you know, pattern, and, mm -hmm. and men would be marrying women of somewhat lower status. Now, the only way that can actually work in society, if everyone's marrying everyone, then you've got to have equality in terms of status. But what 
easily can happen is that it could be that high status women who are not physically attractive find it difficult to find mates and then low status men whatever their characteristics are also find it difficult to find mates and the interesting thing for the english data all the way through is that there's absolutely no sign of this on average men and women are marrying people of equal status and that's you know the, and it's the same pattern for right at the top of the distribution <laughs> and right at the bottom of the distribution and so somehow the way marriage is operating in practice is that people are just matching up mainly on their kind of social status and that you you are actually not getting this uh, as i say marrying up by women or marrying down by men and so so that's a kind of interesting social aspect of our society which is why do people choose to marry in that way right it's not obvious that that's going to be the happiest marriage or the ideal marriage <laughs> why would it be that people seem to care so much about someone's kind of underlying status but i think what what this reflects is that when you're dating someone uh we have these very imperfect measures as social scientists about how many years have you been to school what's your occupation what's your income people getting married actually have much much more information you can tell by talking to someone for not that long a time what's their sense of humor what's their knowledge how smart are they how clever are they how imaginative are they and that it's interesting that these things seem to matter a lot when people get married and that they're leading to this kind of very tight assortment of people at very similar levels in the kind of social hierarchy uh, and as i say they're underpinning this tendency to have just a lot of persistence across generations